In Sweden, they have a really beautiful practice called Swedish death cleaning. And as morbid as that sounds, or maybe off-putting, it is a really wonderful thing because what it entails, if you've not heard of it, is elderly people or people thinking they're approaching the sunset years of their life begin a really intensive process to declutter massively all of their possessions with the intention of not wanting to have their possessions become a burden to those they are leaving behind. If anyone out there has ever lost a family member, they know how painful it can be to go through their items and sort of you're left to deal with all of their stuff. And some sentimental things can be beautiful, they can be nostalgic, but a lot of it is just crap that no one really wants. And then in the pain of facing the loss of that loved one, you're now dealt with going through winter coats and old boxes of papers and just knickknacks and random stuff that is now your responsibility. So Swedish death, Swedish death cleaning sort of negates this by uh, the, taking the personal responsibility to let go of these items that probably aren't useful to those you are leaving behind. Um, you know, not talking about like super nice heirlooms or jewelry or whatever that you want to pass on, but just houses filled with stuff because everyone has it. And as you get older, you tend to accumulate more and more. So I think this is a really beautiful practice because even though it is no one wants to face death really um we will all face it and it's i i think it's a a really nice gift to want to relieve that burden of your family of having to go through just aimless stuff and taking that on yourself and sort of coming face to face with your your own belongings and i'm sure it is a trip down memory memory lane i've certainly decluttered a lot in my life but i've never done anything with the intention of swedish death cleaning because it is something that's typically targeted towards elderly people but i i was thinking about this the other day i kind of have a proposition what if we all just started swedish death cleaning now despite our age because I don't mean this to be sounding negative in any kind of way, but more just to shine light on how precious life is. We actually don't know when we're going to go. None of us do. It's a privilege to get older. It's a privilege to see your 80s, your 90s, or become a centenarian, but that might not happen. Of course, I hope it happens for everyone, but we know how life goes sometimes. And what if we took on that personal responsibility now as far as just constant decluttering but even bigger than just decluttering taking on a mindfulness of knowing that every single thing we purchase actually is going to be left behind even if it's not something that's dealt with our by our family someone at some point will have to deal with this it is existing on this earth if you are purchasing something and it's not a consumable like food or water or you know lotion or something that gets used up once it's purchased it exists and you may not think about it or you may think well this is adding value to my life right now and that can be a good thing i'm not saying you can never buy things again but what if there was the forethought more of, okay, I'm buying this thing and I'm bringing it into my life, but eventually I won't be here. So what value will this thing add to someone else's life? Will it even add value to someone else's life? And chances are maybe it could, but I think the chances are higher that it actually won't. And I was thinking about this a lot the other day too, because I did a little ceremony I had a sweet baby girl black cat named Gemma um, for 11 years. She passed away not so recently. It was in the fall of 2022, so a little over a year ago now, but she, she had cancer and it was brutal, but I was very thankful because um, we got to do at-home euthanasia, so we got to take ease her suffering and be with her as she transitioned. So I was very thankful I got to say goodbye. And part of what they do for that, the little service, is they they clip a, a painlessly, of course, they clip a little tuft of her fur, uh, of the animal's fur, so that you can keep that with you. And maybe some other people who have lost pets have done this as well. And I've had it up until this time, but something sort of tugged at my soul 
the other day. I'm, I'm not really sure why it was like a download or something that I just really wanted to release it back to the earth. And I had that and one of her collars still that had Gemma on it, her little name, and it was sitting in a drawer and it did warm my heart to see it, but also I, I just felt this urge to release this last part of her body back to the earth. Um, because the lesson is no matter what, when you transition to the other side, whether you're a four-legged baby or you're a person that owns a home and clothes and a house and a car and maybe very fancy jewelry, no matter who you are, whether you're the rich or the, in the elite or a politician or an actress or a normal person or any whatever country you're in the world, you can't take it with you. And no matter how much stuff you have, that will never bring your body back to this earth and this time. And it's such a hard lesson. The, you know, Buddhists talk about non-attachment so much, but we, we want to hold on to things so badly. And I'm not saying if you've lost a loved one that you should absolutely get rid of any heirlooms that you have that you cherish from them. If it brings joy to your heart, then, then keep it by all means. This is a personal choice, but it is a reminder that no matter how much stuff you have of this being that you loved, again, whether it's a fur baby or an, an uncle or grandparent or anyone, nothing will bring that person back. And again, I don't mean that to be a negative thing. It's really just a reality that we have to face and more of a call to, it doesn't mean you have to forget this person, but the, the true memories of whoever you love passing on really actually live in your heart, not in the physical things. And photographs are wonderful too, but the the physical items, they're they're just items. You're you're you don't love someone because of the jewelry they had or a blanket they made or the collar that they wore. It's you love them because of the love and connection, and that's ethereal and non-physical, but that is what stays with you forever in your heart. So I did a little ceremony. There's actually by the beach, there's a shrine. It's like a community shrine. It's very beautiful that many people leave sort of talismans of um, loved ones who have passed on. So I put her collar there and did a blessing ceremony and then gave the little tuft of fur back to the earth so I could just fully release her. Um, and it was liberating, not in the way of like, oh, I got rid of that stuff. Like it was very emotional, but it felt... Uh, it just felt right. I don't know, maybe some of you have had similar experiences you could relate to. It just, it was like there was a part of me still clinging on of like, oh, I still have this little piece of Gemma because I've got this little fur and um, it, but she's not here, but her, her spirit is, her spirit's always in my heart. Her love is always in my heart. I will never forget her, but there it was a spiritual thing to just release those final items of like, yes, I, I have to let go because life is letting go over and over and over. You may lose a relationship. You may lose someone you love. You may lose a job. You'll lose your youth. Um, I'm about to turn 40 in a couple months. That's a big milestone. I want to embrace it, but it is kind of like, oh, wow. Like I'm a bona fide middle-aged, whatever the hell that means, but maybe I'm not middle-aged. I could die tomorrow. You don't know again. So it's getting older is a privilege. Um, but there, there is that little sense of loss, but it doesn't have to be negative. It's just letting go and letting go and letting go because life is constantly changing. And if you have that mentality, remembering as you go through, these things don't come with you. And the true value in life is just love and connection and passion, doing something you care about, being of service, helping people, raising wonderful children if you're a parent or just being a wonderful friend or getting to see amazing things like nature or just anything that makes your heart sing. Those are the things that when you, you see these interviews of elderly people who are near the end of your life, their lives or people who are perhaps have terminally illnesses, None of them regret not having more jewelry or more cars or a or Chanel handbag or a bigger wardrobe. 
they, they all talk about the same things. I wish I had done, followed that dream. I wish I'd spent more time with my family. I wish I had traveled more. And those are all experiences and love and connection. And those leave a, a positive impact on the earth versus just things you have consumed. And so I guess my call to action would be to start your Swedish death cleaning now in not just in getting rid of what you have, but being preemptive as you buy each and every item, even just the smallest, simplest thing, whether it's inexpensive or you think, oh yeah, it was on sale, I could have this, or whatever you're taking into your life, take keep in mind that one day it won't be yours and it will be someone else's burden. And maybe it's something that could be very positive, but very often it's just a footprint on the planet and it's not something that's the deepest value in your life, which is again, those things that are love, connection, doing what you're passionate about, being of service, seeing the natural beauty of the world, those are the things that matter. So take Swedish death cleaning into your everyday life and see how that changes. We're just with that mindset of, I'm not here forever, so why should I accumulate these things that outlast me if they're not truly, truly, truly adding immense value into my life? Okay, that is the the talk for the today. Let me know if you've heard of Swedish death cleaning, if you feel comf comfortable talking about um, having lost a loved one and what the process was like of, say, being in charge of dealing with their house full of things and what that did for you emotionally. And maybe it's a positive thing for a lot of people. I'm sure that could be, you know, interesting to see the timeline of people's things, but I know it can cause a lot of people a lot of stress. So I'd love to hear from you if you feel comfortable sharing that experience and uh, let me know if that resonates. Can you take Swedish death cleaning into your life now at any age and every day going forward, knowing that the true things in matter that matter in life are in your heart and through connection and experience and connecting to the natural world and trying to just leave less things behind so that we have a healthier planet. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.